Hello, welcome to the IEBC interviews at the uh, IEC General Meeting 2016 in Frankfurt. My name is Coach Lüttelburg, I'm from the DKE in Frankfurt as well. And I will talk uh, today in this uh, very first interview of the interview series about standardization, of course, because we are at the IEC General Meeting, but standardization in particular uh, concerning household appliances. And um, for this talk, we have uh, got two experts, and these experts are basically representing two different worlds of standards or standardization. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bernhard Scheuren from uh, Vorwerk. You are the chair of IEC SC 59F, Surface correct. Cleaning Appliances. I hope this was correct. Absolutely. Always uh, difficult abbreviations. And Lawrence M. Howard from Lawrence Partners. Uh, and you are the chair of ASTM F11 Vacuum Cleaners. Correct. So you're representing different standard worlds, the ASTM world and the IEC world. So Bernhard, could you briefly explain what IEC does standardize in your committee? Yes, willingly. Well, my company, uh, my uh, com subcommittee is responsible for the development of a uh, performance standard for surface cleaning appliances. That means for vacuum cleaners, both mains operated and battery operated, for cleaning robots, for steam cleaners, for wet carpet cleaners and some other product categories. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Lawrence, what is your world I about? The F11 committee of ASTM has the same responsibilities with a few less products, but we work in essence in parallel. We're doing the same, same things slightly differently. And what is the difference actually about it? Could you please explain a little bit? What does uh, it mean? Both standards groups have different formats for their standards. Uh, some uh, basic differences are the IEC standards are generally done based on a uh, product grouping whereas the ASTM standards, although we have separate standards for each of the performance tests, rather than by product. Mm -hmm. And where is the problem? What? Both Bernard? standards are historically developed separately and independently that led in the past to separate test methods comprising of test, uh, different test equipment, different test material, and this forces laboratories to conduct tests twice mm -hmm. without any benefit for the quality of the product and to avoid double testing, we had an idea in the past to uh, overcome this problem. Mm -hmm. And what do the standard users think about this? I mean, uh, the standards are being used not only by the test laboratories, but for example as well by manufacturers or others? At the end, it could lead to confusion at the consumer if a product is tested according to two different standards and claims, different claims, are based on two different standards. So at the end, it could lead to confusion. Mm -hmm. The standards are used actually by the manufacturers, by test laboratories, by retailers, by uh, governmental bodies such as those you have here for the energy label where you have verification bodies. So the standards are broadly used. Mm -hmm. um, Lawrence, what is about the testing procedures according to your standards? Could you please make it a little bit more practical? You have a practical example. How does it work or, or work not? Uh, the, the, the standards work well. Uh, the, the diff are, are you asking me actually about the differences, how one standard works versus the other? I'm not certain yeah. of your question. If that's what, that's what you're... No, my question is uh, from the perspective of a test laboratory, for example, if they are confronted with all these different standards, what does it mean practically? I mean, oh. just to, to perform yeah. this job, yeah. okay. or why is it so difficult? In my other life, I'm a part the owner of ah. a laboratory. Okay. So uh, what it means is that our technical staff must be capable of learning proficiency for both standards. If you wish to be an accredited laboratory, you have to be proficient in the method itself. You also, where equipment is different or materials are different, you have to have the space and the investment in both, Bo all of which is, you know, makes, makes it di more difficult. The same is true by rights for the laboratories and the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. You have to conduct all the testing twice without necessarily leading to better products at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and you made the decision to bring the things closer together, to, to put it together. It's, it's been desired all, you know, for many, quite, quite many years, but we had, until recently, 
not made as yeah. much progress as we would like. Now we're at the point where we're uh, fairly close to an agreement uh, that will provide a working process and in for those uh, standards that are, are applicable, that are really uh, suitable on a global scale, we'll only do it once. Mm. So the idea was to have joint, fully integrated meetings where experts from the ASTM and ISC world sitting together in the same room discussing the same problems and hopefully coming to the same solutions. Mm. And that's what we're doing here. Yeah. This is a joint meeting for us. Okay, and, and, and does it work? Or are there cultural gaps or language? Are there cultural gaps, for example, or la language gaps? I, I mean, th th there are some differences, but I, you th know, and, and for many of us, English is a second language. I include myself there, <laughs> at least when I'm in England. But uh, I, the, uh, I don't think that the cultural, there are significant cultural differences. I mean, we all serve a global market today, so I don't think that those are, uh, mm. are at issue. I think that the uh, legislation in different, different parts of the world has an impact, but other than that, I don't think that those are significant. Mm. How, how many meetings did you have so far, joint meetings did you have so far? We had one joint meeting yeah, okay. two years ago in Canada, now the first fully integrated joint meeting under the ISC umbrella. And we recently Scheduled decided next year already, and, the, and we were talking about the yeah. 2018 as well. Yeah, so to have it on a yearly basis. On okay. a yearly basis, and and many of us are participants in both yeah. standards organizations. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and and given this, what would be the next steps? Just to bring it on another level, or so. So cooperation between experts within the meetings does work, but of course we would dream of having. Uh, the same standards called dual logo standards that would be a dream hopefully it comes true within yeah. the next time we're, we're, uh, yeah. we're talking about a formal agreement to do this which is what, what's required mm. here yeah. do you think uh, what you achieved could act as a best practice for other fields or so for other topics other committees I uh, the impression that I have is if we were successful that this will be repeated many times. I know that we are monitored by other committees or subcommittees, and of course, we are fully open to share our experience with other committees. Okay, so thank you very much, Lawrence and uh, Bernhard. I think My this, pleasure. Is, a, this is a you. very good example for uh, cooperation between organizations, and uh, we wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. IEC General Meeting 2016. Connecting communities. Reinvent standardization.